I'm going to share with you an ethanol explosion. There's lots of reasons for doing this reaction, but I can't think of a better reason than just the fact that I want to do it. And so what I've got here is a small plastic container. Each side, I've stuck into each side of the bottle, opposite sides. Um, you can use a nail, but for safety's sake, I like using something that's threaded, a screw-like device. So I've inserted this so that there's about a half centimeter gap between the two here. And then on the top, I've got a cork. And I always like putting a little pom-pom, something soft on the top of it uh, for safety, uh, just in case. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make an explosive mixture. That should appeal to a few of you. And I'm going to take about a milliliter of ethanol, squirt it down into the bottle. Put the cork on the top. And what I'm going to do is take the bottle and I'm just going to roll this around. I'm taking advantage of surface area, coating the sides of the bottle so that the ethanol is going to evaporate faster. As it mixes with the air in the bottle, it's going to create an explosive mixture. Now, where would you want to use this reaction in your classroom? There's really lots of places. This is a combustion reaction. You could look at the stoichiometry of the reaction. It's an exothermic reaction, so you could look at the heat involved. You could actually do calculations on a per mole basis if you measured the amount of um, ethanol that you put into the bottle and you took some measurements. But we're just doing it for fun. Now, I probably added an excess of ethanol, so what I'm going to do is just real quickly take, dump the excess ethanol out. Oh, yeah. Leave this here. And then I'm going to use a Tesla coil. Now the Tesla coil is going to create a spark that will jump the short gap between the two metal pieces. It's going to put in enough energy so that it overcomes the activation energy. This reaction is going to go fast. There's going to be a combustion reaction in a very confined space. That means it's going to be an explosion. Here we go. You might want to cover your ears. You know how to do it properly. Now, there's cheers from the crowd. Students always say, oh, that was great, that was great, let's do it again. And so, let's do it again. Let's take some of the ethanol into the bottle. I mean, if it was good the first time, it's going to be even better the second time, isn't it? Cork on. Ooh, as I pick up the bottle, I feel the heat from that reaction. The bottle's quite warm. Roll it around. Let the surface area help it evaporate faster for us. Dump out the excess. We'll do it again, and let's set this one off. Here we go. No reaction, and this isn't a demonstration that I've blown. This one's not going to react, and there's a reason for it. You know, when the first reaction occurred, it consumed the oxygen, the air, that was in the container the first time, and so now there isn't a sufficient air and, or oxygen remaining in the flask to create that um, explosive mixture. We'd have to actually replenish the oxygen, the air, in this flask for it to work a second time. Well, this is mini-me, but down here on the far end of the counter is the real me. If the students enjoy the small version, you know this one's going to be a real hit. So the same thing goes here. Now, I've used slightly larger screws here, but they are threaded. And if you're not going to have some sort of a thread here for safety, there's a possibility that a nail could come flying out, and you don't want that happening in your classroom. So I like the threads. Uh, to whatever I put into the uh, bottle. And the other thing that you can do, I actually did apply uh, on the side here a small amount of hot glue just for a little extra added protection. You can never be too safe when you're doing science. 
All right, a little bit of alcohol. I always like to add enough, not a lot, just a milliliter or two. I like to know that when I get ready to explode the mixture that's there, that I've added enough to saturate the inside of the container with the vapors of the alcohol. This one I can actually see the alcohol run uh, as it's rolling around the sides and I can kind of look to see how fast it's evaporating. There's a little bit of alcohol remaining there, but, but not a lot, I don't think. You don't want to waste your supplies of any chemical in the stock room. All right, let's pour this out. You don't have to insert, insert the stopper um, hard at all. Okay. If you want to cover your ears again, here we go. Hmm, I left a little bit too much alcohol in the flask. You could hear that thumping noise as the alcohol that was in there was burning away. And you could also tell that there was a difference in the sound between the mini-me and the large ethanol explosion. Have a good time with it. Use it in your classroom when it fits in with the concepts you're trying to teach that day. Enjoy.